Hey, welcome to our last uh, virtual day at the zoo today with our meerkats, our marvellous mob of meerkats. Um, so as you can see at the moment, they're rather busy. Um, I've just fed them some mealworms in these uh, tubes that you can see. And you can see that they, they love their mealworms. They are going for it. You could probably hear them as well if you, if you listen carefully. They're not very quiet. So we've got 15 meerkats here. They are a family group led by mom and dad called Husky and Beagle and their children. <laughs> and you can see they're really, really dexterous with their little feet. Getting right in there, getting those lovely, delicious mealworms. So we do always say that mealworms to meerkats is like chocolate to humans. They absolutely love them. And lucky for them, I've got plenty, plenty to go around. So I'm going to throw a bit more out. Our cameraman is being very careful with his fingers as these are very inquisitive little things. So our meerkats are really, really popular. Everyone thinks they're absolutely adorable. But I have to say, I'm going to break everyone's hearts and tell you that meerkats really aren't as cute as they look. So meerkats are actually uh, part of the order carnivora, which means they love a bit of meat. So they do eat um, small animals. So in the wild, they eat bugs, small animals, birds, lizards, anything really they could get their teeth into. And that's because they are from the desert. Um, when food is a, a bit scarce, so they've got to really, really go for anything and not be picky. Um, so we've got to be quite careful with what they eat here because they are bottomless pits. So you know with your dog and cat home, you've kind of got to monitor how much you give them, otherwise they get a bit rotund. So it's the same for meerkats in captivity. They will continue eating and eating and eating. So we do actually measure exactly how much food they get every day. So here at Chester Zoo, they get mealworms, they get locusts, and they also get pre-killed mice. Now we've got the bugs for them today. And it's a little bit nicer to watch. Oh, look at them being naughty. They're not shy, are they? There we go. Here's some more worms. There we go. So they are acting like they've never been fed before, but I promise you they have already had their breakfasts and a few locusts. So they're just pretending. Trying to make us all feel sorry for them. So you'll notice on here, on the paddock, we've got lots of um, sort of like puzzle feeders, like the tubes you can see. We've also got these um, sort of lumps of um, wood you can see lying around. Um, that's really useful for the meerkats because we hide the bugs in there uh, and they have to really, really look for it. So meerkats would naturally dig for their food in the wild. Um, and it's what, it, what they're perfectly adapted for, really. So let me see if I can show you. Whee! If we look at their claws and their, on their front feet, they're kind of hooked. They're like little scoops. So they're not, um, that's not how they'd catch prey as such. It's how they dig through the ground to catch all the bugs and things. And they'd actually uh, bite on the bugs with their teeth, which are no joke, I have to say. Make it very small, but they do bite very hard. Um, and so when they're digging, they're using those perfect little scoop feet. Um, they also have something called a nictating membrane. That's on their eyes and it helps protect their eyes uh, from any dirt. So a nictating membrane is like a second eyelid. They've also got these tiny little ears and they can actually close them up uh, to keep any dirt out when they're digging. And you can see their noses. They're wet like a dog's. And um, that's because they, so they can uh, smell really well. So that wet nose helps pick up those scent particles. So meerkats have actually loads of adaptations to live in the desert. Uh, you see they're stripy, helps them blend in with a sort of sandy environment, helps break up their silhouette. Um, and their main predator would be a bird of prey. So you imagine looking down on a meerkat and they've got this wavy sort of looking fur. Uh, they're not really that obvious, really. And my favourite thing about the meerkats, um, probably their eyes. So they have a good look at them they've got these dark patches around their eyes they've basically got inbuilt sunglasses uh, which i think is really really cool so they do um, look up at the sky all the time for any birds of prey that might be having a look around for them um, and they can look directly at the sun um, thanks to those little dark eyes that they've got
So they do make quick work of the mealworms that I'm putting out for them. They like to keep us on our toes, they're not shy at all. So our meerkats here still do that very iconic meerkat pose where they sit on their back legs and they almost stand up. So their tail's really useful for that. It kind of works like a tripod um, to help them stand up. And when they are standing up, they are very often warming their bellies against the sun. Uh, so it helps them thermoregulate. So they've got a dark patch of skin on their bellies. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and it helps soak up um, any sunshine that comes through. And that is very important, especially in England. Um, and also when they're standing up, they are looking out for any predators. So meerkats are a very social animal. Uh, they can live in mobs of up to 50 meerkats. That's a lot. That number would always be changing in the wild, especially. Um, as, you know, children will grow up and they'll want to leave and make families of their own. Um, but they're really, really social in the way that they communicate with each other. So they have lots of different communications that they can use, so lots of different vocalisations. So they have different warning vocalisations for different predators and how far away that predator is. Um, so it's actually really complex. So mum and dad are very much on top. Uh, they're very dominant. Um, and so everyone has their own job within the group. Um, so mum is the only one who is allowed to breed. Um, any daughters that do the same would get very much in trouble in the wild. Thankfully our group is very, very calm. And we haven't had any naughty daughters yet. So mum very much keeps everyone in line. There we go, this is mum here. She's very boisterous. Her name's Husky. And she's usually sort of standing right in front of us because she knows, she's clever, she knows how to get the food and she's got quite a round, cute little face. Hello. All right, you want some more food? So I think I'm gonna throw out some locusts now, another favorite of the meerkats. I will show you. So these are desert locusts, oh, pinging around. This is a locust. There we go. There we go, everyone. Whee! Whee! So meerkats aren't actually endangered at all. They are listed as least concern on the IUCN red list. Um, they don't actually have any major threats currently. Um, now, obviously, in time, they will suffer from climate change and habitat um, loss. But currently, they're doing okay because they are right little survivors. So, very much, we have them in the zoo. Uh, pretty much every zoo in the UK uh, will have meerkats because they are just so popular. Um, and they work as little ambassadors, really. So, perhaps the less charismatic endangered animals, um, you know, may not draw the public in. But these guys definitely do. Everyone loves meerkats. So they're really useful for getting you guys into the zoo. And so we can help the less charismatic animals. Oh yeah. Gosh, they're eating very quickly. <laughs> Go on in, over there. Go over there. We do have to be really careful when we're walking in here because they absolutely love to get under your feet. So I have to employ something uh, that I call a meerkat shuffle, where we just shuffle along so they can't actually get under our feet that way. Uh, because they're quite silly. They like to run under our feet. Hi. You gonna look up? If you listen to that grumbling that's basically a I don't want to share kind of noise they're not too grumpy with each other but they are not the best at sharing sometimes so feeding times the only time that you'll see um, all the meerkats in one place usually there is a meerkat doing its job called a sentry duty 
And that's when one meerkat is looking up on a, on a sort of high um, part of the enclosure. Uh, so the termite mound that's behind us is a favourite. And they'll be looking out for danger. So meerkats actually have binocular vision. So they can see things from way far away that even we haven't noticed yet. And then suddenly, you know, we'll be in here feeding them and they'll shout and they'll go hide. And then we'll look up and there might be a plane or something going overhead. And we wouldn't have even seen it yet. So they're pretty amazing in that way. <laughs> so all the meerkat um, meerkats have their stripes but they're all very different uh, we can also use their facial features as ways to identify them but the most surefire way that we identify our meerkats is through a microchip uh, so they all are microchipped and it's all a, a unique number that they all have so if we need to know who one is to do a, um, a health check or a veterinary procedure, we scan them and they've all got their own number. Because looking at them now, I bet you can't tell me who each one is. <laughs> and we struggle too. Um, so yeah, but, um, thankfully we don't have to handle them very often. But when we do, we have to use very thick gauntlet gloves and we have to know how to handle them properly. Because if given the opportunity, meerkats can bite through bone. Another fun thing they do when we have to handle them is actually um, release um, a very noxious fluid from their anal glands. So another reason why meerkats uh, would make a terrible pet. Uh, they dig a lot. They make all these holes that we fall in every day. They can bite through bone. They're quite stinky. They eat lots of bugs. But believe it or not, the meerkats are very popular in the pet trade, unfortunately. And it's really not the best thing for them at times, as they're very social. Um, not many people want to keep a whole mob of meerkats. And a meerkat by itself would be having a pretty rubbish time. <laughs> so meerkats are only found in northern South Africa, uh, Botswana and Namib Namibia very often found in the Kalahari Desert. And they're a kind of mongoose, which often surprises people. Oh, here we go. <laughs> very curious little things. <laughs> Come on, here please. Thank you. <laughs> Got to protect our cameraman from very curious meerkats. Yes, very food orientated. I hope you've all loved seeing our meerkats. Um, believe me, we'd all love to see you guys again as well. Um, hopefully it's soon. Um, this will actually be one of our last um, virtual days at the zoo because actually we're hoping to open up um, on the 12th, 12th of April. But obviously we know nothing is set in stone at the moment, but we cannot wait to see you guys again. And our meerkats uh, will be here waiting for you as soon as you come back in. Thank you very much, guys.